Holland Wilcox acknowledges the traditional custodians of the lands on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to all First Nations people joining us today. I think when you're starting out and everything's new, I think the best and most important thing is just to have a good attitude and kind of have an open mind and, a, a, I guess, a yes attitude to things. Every day is going to present a new challenge and be interested and excited by that challenge, I think, and be inquisitive, you know, want, want, to, want to understand how things work and what makes your client's business tick. Hello and welcome back to our latest Smarter Lawcast episode. This season is dedicated to law grads. My name is Ariana Sarapulu. My name is Sean Kempel and we are your hosts for this podcast. Today, we're delighted to be joined by two of Holland Wilcox's newest partners, Vanessa Murphy and Ben Cotter. Vanessa and Ben became partners on 1 July this year and both joined the firm as clerks and have spent their entire legal careers here. Welcome, Vanessa and Ben. Before we begin, I'd first like to congratulate you both on your recent elevation to partners of the firm. It is quite a tremendous achievement. Um, And just jumping straight into things, uh, Vanessa, let's start with you. Can you go give us a brief outline of your career? What what is your story? Where where are you at now? What makes you, you? Thanks, Sean. Um, So I started at the firm as a seasonal clerk in the, the formal seasonal clerkship program. Um, So I did a rotation in the tax team as part of the clerkship program. And and back then we did just do one rotation in one team. Um, I then came back the following year to start my graduate year. um, And I did four rotations across that 12 month period. So um, I went to our commercial disputes team, um, our tax team, our banking and financial services team and corporate and commercial team. Um, I then settled the following year in the corporate and commercial team, um, sort of more on the the corporate transactional side of things and have been um, in that team ever since. I should have mentioned I started in the Melbourne office, so my clerkship graduate year and the the start of my career were all in Melbourne. Um, I also did a bit of a stint in Brisbane um, a couple of years ago when we bought our first corporate partner on there um, and now actually work in the Sydney office and have done uh, for around 12 months now. So I've, I've been in a few of our offices and have taken sort of the, I guess, the traditional um, uh, career path through the firm. Yeah, and I imagine that would have been a fantastic experience in and of itself to be able to go from state to state and just be able to have a different experience altogether, right? Yeah, it was fantastic. Um, so it, it was great for me. I've obviously got to work very closely with people across um, three of our offices. Um, I think, though, we're a firm that... We do have very national practice groups and a very um, genuinely national sort of collaboration approach. Um, So we probably know each other um, interstate a lot better than um, people at perhaps other firms do anyway. Um, But it gave me the opportunity to really connect with um, colleagues interstate, um, as well as to to form relationships with clients across different states. And it's um, great to have sort of that diverse client base now as well. Oh, absolutely. And and thank you even for just taking the time to share your story here. And with that, then Ben, can you also give us just a brief sort of outline of, of your career as well and where you are now? Yeah, no worries. Um, basically exactly the same as Vanessa, but I stayed in Melbourne the whole time. Um, no, um, I, was, I was also a seasonal clerk at Holland Wilcox um, probably a few years before Vanessa. Um, I was in the tax team as well. So funny to hear that. Vanessa was also a seasonal clerk in the tax team. Must be something in that. Um, And then I started my graduate year, um, rotated around the firm um, to five different practice groups um, in my year. That's what we did, which was pretty short and sharp, but also great because you got to meet basically everyone in the firm. Um, When I started, we were only in Melbourne. Um, Then after my graduate year, I settled into the property and projects team and sort of progress through over the years to senior associate, special counsel, and now to partner. Um, yeah, I said I've been based in Melbourne the whole time, but over, you know, our firm has grown so much in the team and and has grown so much over those years that, um, you know, change of building, it feels a bit different. <laughs> it's definitely not the same as when I started on day one. 
Thank you so much for sharing that, Ben and Vanessa. It's really interesting to hear about your different perspectives and great to hear about the diverse work that you've done. Since we've got you, Ben, um, I was wondering if you can tell us a little bit more about what it means to be in property and projects and specifically in construction. Yep, so I specialise in construction law, uh, which sits within our property and projects team. And in that property and projects team, we have a, a sort of playing environment focus, a property slash real estate focus, and a construction slash projects focus. Um, so specialising in construction, um, in particular in, in front end construction matters. Uh, so that is sort of basically helping clients build anything that they want to build, <laughs> um, to put it as simple, in simple terms, I'm a simple construction lawyer. Um, <laughs> so um, drafting construction contracts, negotiating construction contracts, um, consultancy agreements with like architects and engineers, um, and sort of helping the client all the way through the construction of their, the delivery of their project really. Um, so, you know, if, if there's like disputes that come across along the way, we would assist with that. Um, and just assist them with complying with the contract all the way through um, until there's an end product. That's great. Thanks for sharing. I did a little bit of construction work during my rotation in CDR in commercial disputes, and I find it a very cerebral area of the law. So um, it's great to hear about that as well. And Vanessa, what about you? What does it look like um, in corporate and commercial? And what area do you specialize in? Um, so I'm in the corporate transactional um focus area of the practice. So my practice is relatively broad um, in the corporate transactional area. I do mergers and acquisitions, equity capital markets work, um, and have a particular focus on investment funds. Um, so the focus on investment funds is not only transactional, but it's also regulatory. Um, and a lot of I do a lot of um, retail and wholesale fund establishments, um, particularly in the real property um, and the private credit and debt space. Yeah, fantastic, Vanessa. And I understand that both of you had a chance to rotate through various teams during your time as a graduate. I thought to ask, and it might be good for our listeners, what made you land on the practice area that you're in now? How, how did you, was there a sort of connection? Um, was there a sort of certain interest that really sparked or, or, or piqued your desire to go into this team? Vanessa, I'll, I'll start with you. What made corporate special for you? Um, I actually started out my graduate year hell-bent on being a tax lawyer. Um, and was pretty sure that I was not going to be interested in any of my other rotations. Um, and then I did my corporate and commercial rotation as my third rotation. Um, so my one just before my final rotation, which was in tax, um, and just absolutely loved the transactional work and sort of the pace of it um, and kind of the, the energy of the team. Um, so it just felt like sort of the right fit. Um, and, and I think too, you do um, particularly sort of find yourself kind of molding into a team and I just felt like corporate was kind of the, the right place for me. And, and how about you, Ben? What what was it about property that piqued your interest? Um, this is a funny story. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, very actually very similar to Vanessa again, which is quite funny. So when I in my graduate year, um, one of the teams I rotated through was tax. I was also a seasonal clerk in tax. And when I was a seasonal clerk in tax, that's tr like triggered me to do a tax unit at uni as well. Um, so yeah, I was pretty similar in that. I Yeah, I think this tax stuff is pretty interesting. Um, you know, was, the tax team was a great team to sort of be in, good people. So I, that's where I thought I was going to end up. At the, <laughs> at the end of my uh, year, we you basically sort of, you get to put in your preferences for, you know, sort of where you'd like to end up. And the teams also put in their preferences Unfortunately for me, in my graduate year, there was someone who was a very good friend of mine, um, one of my best friends now. He spent about five years at the ATO before he came to Holland Wilcox. So maybe unsurprisingly, he was the tax team's first preference for who they <laughs> took. So um, that means I got my second preference, which was the property team, um, but no regrets and have never looked back. So, you know, it's, it's all turned out perfectly well in the end. Thanks, Ben. That's really funny. And indeed, it sounds like you've landed in the right spot because now you've been promoted to partner. So speaking of partnership, um, how has your role and responsibility changed since um, you've been promoted to partner? 
Yeah, it's really, it's just, it's a much broader role and a, lot, a broader scope of things to think about, um, really. So I think when you're going through the ranks, you're probably just focused on your personal performance and um, making sure that you're doing well, you know, you're learning and um, you're hitting your targets. And, you know, if you hit your targets, that helps you get promoted type thing and you're sort of meeting meeting the goals that you've set for yourself. I guess when you become partner, it's almost like personal performance is less important. It's more about the team and supporting the team, developing a team. Yeah, and, and really just managing a team and managing clients more. And it's not like, you know, it's not like a black and white switch, but it is, um, yeah, there's a, there's a difference. There's definitely a difference. And, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a gradual transition. Every, every sort of promotion along the way, is a gradual transition and you're almost already doing the job that you're getting promoted into before you get promoted. So maybe with the shift of partnership, there's a few more, you know, there's probably is a bigger bit jump or a bit more noticeable change. Um, but it's still like in terms of, you know, capability and that sort of thing, most people are already operating at that level once, they, once they're promoted. So it's more sort of the other business side of the things that come with it that is the main change. Yeah, absolutely. It's it sounds like it definitely creates more of a a leadership mentality that you're more focused on the team. Um, do you have you had a similar experience with that as well, Vanessa? Do you share similar thoughts to Ben? Yeah, very similar to Ben's experience. Um, I certainly agree with Ben that you sort of um, operate as close as you can to the position you want to be in just before you get promoted. Um, but I think at the same time, there's a lot of things with the partnership promotion, there's a lot of things that you can't be doing sort of until you you actually are a partner. Um, so a lot more of that sort of, I guess, broader management and um, and business, broader business responsibility, I guess. Yeah. yeah. And, and with that, looking at the opposite end of the spectrum now, now that you two have, you know, worked your way up and become you know, elevated to this position of partner, do you have any advice that you would give to those just starting out in their career? Like if you were a graduate entering into the team or a clerk or a paralegal, what, what would you say to them? Uh, Vanessa, what, what, what are your thoughts? I think when you're starting out and everything's new, I think the best and most important thing is just to have a good attitude and kind of have an open mind and a, a I guess a yes attitude to things. Um, so obviously not taking on too much that it then makes it difficult to manage things but being open to trying everything um you know uh, I guess the example I gave before of thinking that I wanted to do one thing coming into my graduate year and then actually finding out that I wanted to do something else um you you just find that out by giving everything a go and and being open-minded I think um and and having a positive sort of can-do attitude yeah that's probably the main thing I think for our, our grads and clerks so um, thanks, Vanessa. So Ben, what are your thoughts? What what advice would you give to those just starting out in their career? Very similar to what Vanessa has just said. Um, I think it's about having an open mind and being adaptable. I think to an extent, taking it day by day, um, you know, you sort of, you know, you set yourself some goals, but then it's, you know, just the ability to work through them day by day and take every day as it comes. Every day is going to present a new challenge and um, be interested and excited by that challenge i think and be inquisitive you know want to want to, un, want to understand how things work and what makes your clients business tick and and what makes people that you work with tick and just get to know the people you work with and you'll make great relationships and you know that will just make work more enjoyable Thanks, Ben. I think that's really great advice and something that um, Sean and I should definitely implement during our grad year. I think just one last question for you both. Um, what does Holland Wilcox actually mean to you and why would you encourage a grad to join the firm? We talk a lot about our culture and I'm reluctant to answer this question with that word because I know that it's how everyone here answers it, but I think it really is the difference between the way that we operate and the way that a lot of other places operate. Um, but I don't just mean culture in the sense that it's um, the way that everyone interacts with each other sort of on a social level and, and things like that. That's certainly part of it. Um, but it's also a culture of kind of um, sharing work and clients and opportunities 
among the partners and among everyone at the firm. Um, I think there's you get a huge amount of um, support, uh, encouragement um, and opportunity from the other people at Hall & Wilcox, um, which to me has been really important and it's been a big part of the reason that I've wanted my career to be here. And what about you, Ben? Uh, yeah, if you're a graduate starting out, I think um, my graduate year was one of the most enjoyable years of my life. And I made friendships in that year, which are, you know, some of these people are some of my best friends now. Um, one of my fellow grads lives in New York and I went over there and visited him. Um, that was just before COVID, uh, fortunately for me. Um, and whenever, whenever he's back in Australia, we catch up and we still chat regularly. You know, other people in that year, another guy lives, you know, 200 metres away from me. We catch up regularly. His kids call me Uncle Ben type relationship so and I don't think that's unusual among different grad years like it seems to be pretty common for our grad groups to have you know to form really strong relationships so and and that sort of just speaks to why it's a special place more generally like whatever it is this must be something in the water yeah pe people are just easy to get along with they're great to work with they're great to you know go out with on a Friday night after work and you know, share some war stories. Um, yeah, it's just, it's a it's a really fun place to work. It's a supportive place to work. Um, so if you're, you know, tossing up between here and somewhere else, I reckon you should, you know, maybe lean towards Hall and Wilcox. Definitely agree with that advice, Ben. I think both Sean and I um, definitely echo that um, because we both joined the firm uh, last year um, from in two different offices and we have found the... Um, the environment to be very welcoming and friendly. Thank you, Vanessa and Ben, and thanks to everyone for listening today. Do you have any burning questions about being a grad or a clerk? We'll be hosting a Q&A episode later in the season where a group of Colin Wilcox grad will answer listener questions. So please pop them in the Q&A box below this episode or DM us on Instagram and stay tuned for the next episode. You can find our details on our website, which is hollandwilcox.com.au or connect with us on LinkedIn. If you enjoyed today's episode, then rate, review, or follow our podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you. This podcast is not legal advice and should not be relied upon as such. You should always obtain legal advice about your specific circumstances.